Long ride, so you better buck. Uh -huh. Man, I'm real tired of being subtle. Uh -huh. When I come up, y'all in trouble. Woo. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Anthony X, and I'm back with another Demon Slayer Mugen Train recording, baby. Reaction to episode three. Episode three was my favorite episode so far. We gotta talk about it. Let's get into it right now. Um, first thing I wanna talk about is, first of all, are we recording? This is my second time doing this. I recorded this actually yesterday, uh, but the recording messed up. I had to, I didn't notice until I was getting into the editing. So I'm doing this again. It's good to see y'all. Hope y'all had a great week. Um, let's get back into this Demon Slayer, man. Uh, so, like I said, episode three is my favorite episode so far um i feel like the theme of this episode it talked about the testament of human strength and how strong we are man uh obviously the show opens up you get your funny moments with uh, zenitsu and inosuke uh zenitsu with uh you know him and nezuko like going on a romantic little excursion and then inosuke he just sees everybody as his workers with uh Pondro and I forgot what he calls Zenitsu, but uh, it was Chinitsu, Chin, Chinutsu or whatever his name is, but um, you get your funny stuff out the way at the beginning of the episode, and then we get into the more serious topics of this episode. Um, it all starts with um, Rengoku's dream. So I'm starting to wonder if my theory about Rengoku uh, like having that dream initially once they punched their ticket uh, that I had in episode Two, that theory that I brought out that uh, maybe after they punch their ticket, uh, like they go straight into dream mode with uh, Rengoku saving the day from the two demons and then everybody sees him as the big brother. Uh, I might have been wrong because in this episode, we actually see um, we actually see Rengoku's dream, baby. Uh, so in his dream, it opens up with him sitting on the floor next to his father who's looking outside at the sunlight. And Rengoku's like, what am I here? What am I supposed to say? Oh yeah, I'm gonna tell him that I'm the new Flame Hashira. He tells his dad, I'm the new Flame Hashira. And his dad's like, what do you want me to do, proud of you? I don't care, like, you're gonna see that that title is worthless. Um, totally just crafts on uh, Rengoku's dream and Rengoku's like, wanting to tell his father about this moment. And then we get, um, wait, I just messed up my notes. So let me tell you this, I am professional. I take notes after every scene. I take notes after every episode. So I'm seriously typing up notes while I'm watching Demon Slayer because I wanna get into, I wanna get into this with y'all and I don't wanna forget anything during these episodes. So <clears throat> we get into that. He tells his father this moment. His father just totally craps on his whole, uh, his whole announcement. And then Rengoku's walking out into the little courtyard, I guess you can say. Uh, he's stopped by his little brother who walks in and asks him how did father take the, take the news and Rengoku being a true man of honor, a true man of valor, he, he doesn't lie to his brother, he tells him the truth. Father didn't really like what I have to say, but he tells his little brother. And this is another reason why the theory I had in episode two is worthless at this point. Because I said that maybe Rengoku wanted to show his little brother that maybe he just like felt guilt that he wasn't in his little brother's life. Well, I don't think that's true because he tells his little brother, follow your dreams, keep the passion burning inside of you. Great person, I love Rengoku. And, and this just, like this, if this arc doesn't make you love Rengoku even more, like I feel like the Demon Slayer team, they're totally just giving people what they want. They're giving the fans what they want with this arc. Because like, if you think about it, this arc is based off the movie. I've seen the movie twice already. A lot of people have seen the movies, the highest grossing movie of 2021. And I know that they're probably doing it for the people who couldn't go to the theaters. It is COVID. I didn't go to the theaters. I just saw it on Funimation. But um, also, like, I feel like it's a little bit, and, and I don't mean this in a negative way at all, but it's a little fan service to the people who wanted to see more Rengoku. Like we're getting Rengoku and we're getting all the moments that make us love him even more in episode three, especially. Uh, so we see that he's an amazing brother. He tells his brother not to seek anyone else's approval. Don't care what anybody say about what your dreams and what your goals are. Follow your own passion. Whatever you do, I know you'll be a great man. We instantly get to the heartstrings of this episode. And then once this is over, I'm thinking it can't get any sadder or it can't get any more touching than in this moment. Because when Goku even says, he says, 
my little brother, like I have to, be, like he's basically saying, I have to be this person for my little brother because he never met her mother. He was too young when she passed away. He doesn't know her, her, her caring side. So I have to be that for my little brother because their father, I don't know if he's seen something on the Demon Slayer field. Well, he's seen something on a field with him being at the previous frame posture because we, and it's crazy because in episode one, we see a completely different Rengoku's dad. We see Rengoku's dad saving uh, which, which was the grandmother and the grandmother's daughter. We see him saving that and he just looks so, so valiant, so honorable. And now we just see him laying on the floor, just staring out into space, just being just this horrible person. And even in the flashback where Rengoku have of his dad, of his dad showing them, you know, how to sword fight, he just has like this jubilance, this, this energy, this excitement about him. And now we just see him completely wrecked. I'm so curious to see what did that to him, and I hope we get to explore that in this arc. Um, <clears throat> after we see Rengoku's dream, uh, you know, it, like, one more thing I want to say. Another great part of Rengoku is when, um, the, you know, when the girl who's working with the, the, the demon, the, the upper, no, the lower one, the girl who's working with him, when she's inside of, um, <clears throat> When she's inside of uh, Rengoku's dream and she reaches his spiritual core. And let's talk about how his, his subconscious is just flame because he keeps the fire burning, man. That's why I love Rengoku. But she sees his spiritual core and it's just a blaze, baby. And she's, she's saying she's never seen another core like this. And as soon as she's about to destroy it, my boy Rengoku rises and he stops her. He stops her while he's sleeping. She didn't expect that. He stops her while she's sleeping, and that just talks about his heart, his determination, his grit. He truly has a strong spirit, and that's what we see from Rengoku. Now we can get to the next dream, which is Tanjiro. And if you thought Rengoku's dream was bad or sad, let's talk about Tanjiro. Tanjiro is walking through the snow, and he returns back to his family. And instead of what we saw in episode one of season one, when he returns to just see his family murdered by a demon, he returns and he sees his family waiting for him to return back. They say, like, oh, let me make sure this is still recording because I'm telling y'all this happened last time. Okay, we're still recording. They say, brother, you're back, brother. Like, they're just happy to see him. And Tanjiro, you know, he tears up, his eyes well up, and he's just happy to see his family. And he's like, wait, was I living a nightmare? Because you know when you're when you're dreaming, sometimes you don't know if it's if it's real. You don't know if you're dreaming. Like you just don't know. It feels so real. So he, he's just he's just enjoying the moment. He goes to his family. He sees his mom. Oh man, this is tough. He sees he sees his mom, and they're just like going on like any other day. Any other day, he's just working. He's preparing. He's just like doing what he does on a regular day. He's taking care of his family. He's so happy to take care of his family. And then, uh, you know, he, he keeps saying stuff to himself. He keeps saying like, oh, uh, like that he asks, where's Nezuko? And they're like, oh, she's in, she's collecting vegetables. And he's like, in the daylight? And they're looking, his siblings are looking at him like, uh, yeah. And he, he's like, wait, why am I saying all this weird stuff? Because he, again, he thinks, he's like, wait, I must have been dreaming with the other stuff that happened. This must be reality. And what makes him realize that he's in a dream state? And back in the real world, Nezuko, she wakes up, she gets out of her box, she sees Tanjiro sleeping, she's trying to wake him up, he's not waking up, she heads but him, he doesn't react, she starts bleeding, she uses her demon power, flame erupts, erupts on a train, and Tanjiro sees this flame in his dream, knows right away that something's wrong. All right, wait, before that happens, let's talk about what happened really to show him. So, Tanjiro, he's just doing his day-to-day. -day. He goes to the river, the lake, the pond, whatever it is. He goes to, let's call it a lake. He goes to the lake. He looks inside. He sees himself telling him, wake up. Wake up. You must wake up. You're, you're, like, your friends are in jeopardy. Your sister's in jeopardy. Wake up now. He goes, like, the, the whatever his image is, pulls him into the pond, or the lake. We're going to call it a lake. Pulls him into the lake. And he's drowning, he's drowning, he's drowning, he wakes up. And all well, he does, he thinks he wakes up. He he comes back to reality, or I shouldn't say reality on this part. He comes back to his dream state reality. And he's at the table with his brother, his little brother and his little sister arguing at the dinner table. He's like, what? Then Nezuko, you know, she does what I just said. He sees the, the flame and he realizes, no, this is a dream. 
I have to get out of this. I have to save Nez Nezuko. Nezuko's in trouble. He storms out of his house. He's running. His siblings are chasing him. His mom is chasing him. He bumps into his dream Nezuko. The Nezuko who would have never turned to a demon. She's she's totally just normal. Like well, whatever normal was in his previous time. And this almost broke me, dog, because I, you feel for Tanjiro in this moment. <clears throat> Tanjiro is such a pure-hearted character. Tanjiro is just such a good person. And you feel for him because Tanjiro knows in this moment he has two choices. <clears throat> he can stay in this dream state where things would have just been normal, or everything that would have happened if the tragedy that happened to his family did not happen. He, he has Nezuko back in human form. He has his family back. He has his mom back. And, and he can stay in the state or he can wake up, face reality, and go save his little sister and his friends. Tanjiro does the hard thing because he's a dog, man. Even though Tanjiro... See, this is the thing about anime characters. Despite, even if they're nice, these characters are some dogs, man. And Tanjiro's a dog. So he, 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 he runs away from his past, man. He runs away from everything that he would have had the happiness that he would have had if this never would have happened because even Tanjiro says I should have never even picked up a sword I should have never even picked up a sword because he's a pure kind-hearted person and what happened to him forced him into the life of a demon slayer his fate was chosen for him at that moment <sighs> that's sad man Tanjiro's story was really cool so let's get back in it I'll give my evaluation after we finish breaking down this episode Tanjiro runs away from his past he runs away from everything he goes into the forest and he's looking around where do I go like like, how, where, like what do I go I have to get out of this I gotta get out of this and then he sees a spirit I'm gonna say this spirit was his father he sees a spirit telling him Tanjiro must use your blade to cut yourself like kind of telling him he has to cut himself from this reality or like that's what he's basically telling himself right Tanjiro doesn't really know what it means because even though I said cut yourself from reality his father the spirit who's talking to Tanjiro did not say that he said you must use your blade right Tanjiro is like I know what that means he puts the blade to his neck and before we say what this what, what he does next Tanjiro knows in this moment that the only way to move forward is to kill his past self. He has to kill, kill his past life. He has to kill the thoughts that maybe if things were to happen this way, or maybe if things were to happen this way, it doesn't matter in this moment. All that matters is he's here now. He has to save his little sister. He has to save his friends. So he puts the blade to his neck and he's hoping, I hope this works. I hope this works because he doesn't know if this is gonna affect him in the real world. And he doesn't, he's trying to save himself, but this is the only way he sees out him, himself to get out of this, this dream state. Puts the blade to his neck. The next scene we see is blood splurting on the snow. So we, we assume that Tanjiro, he cut his neck. In the next episode, and I'm not gonna ruin it for you guys who haven't, who haven't seen the movie, but in the next episode, we're gonna see where this leads him. Wow, what an amazing episode. Wow, what an amazing episode. I love this episode more than anything I've seen from Demon Slayer so far. far. And I'm talking about season one. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna bring up the movie because the movie is a more complete piece because we haven't even seen what happens next in this arc, even though the arc is based on the movie, I get it. But this episode was inspiring, man. It was really inspiring because it, it talks about really moving forward with your reality, accepting reality and, and, and battling with, with what you're dealt with right now. We all want to go through things where we want to change the past. Trust me, I want to change the past too. But Tanjiro, what he taught the viewers in this is you can't. You can't change the past. You can't live in that dream state of what if this would have happened or what if this would have never happened. We have to move forward, man. And that's why I love this episode. We have to move forward. We have to be what we are. We have to fight. That's what Rengoku is teaching us. And that's what Tanjiro was teaching us. I love this episode, man. And I, I can't say it enough because 
This was really my favorite episode that we saw from Demon Slayer so far. I am so ready for the next week's episode to see where this is going to happen. I'm not going to keep y'all too much. Thank you for watching. If this is your first time watching, hit that subscribe button. Uh, please hit the like button. Uh, I, I would really appreciate if you guys just comment down below. Tell me what you think about these episodes. Tell me what you think about episode three. Is this your favorite thing that you've seen from Demon Slayer so far? I loved it personally. I want to see what you guys think. Thank you for watching. Anthony X out. See y'all later, man.